seven churches here in Revelation, only two of them did not receive any sort of rebuke or correction. <laughs> One of the letters out of the two was a church to Smyrna in Revelation uh, 2, 8 through 11. And, that, and the other letter was this one to the church of Philadelphia. The letter to the church of Smyrna is a, a letter to challenge them to remain faithful to the end and stick to their faith. The other five letters are contained with words of complaint, words of correction, words of rebuke. But this letter... To the, to the church of Philadelphia. There's nothing but praises and compliments from the Lord. The Lord says to them, you have a little strength. You have kept my word. You have obeyed my commandments. You have persevered. I will crown you. I will make you a pillar. I will write my name on you. I will write the name of God and the name of God's new city. I will open doors that no one can shut. Amen? Amen? That's right. That's the letter to the church of Philadelphia. As we read the letter, you quickly see there that, that this church is a church that God is using for His glory. He blesses a church that brings God glory. And that's what this church was doing, a Philadelphia church. They were bringing God glory. And all through history, you see it. God always uses the kind of church that brings Him glory. The type of churches that God uses is a Philadelphia type of church. Amen? Yeah. That's right, brothers and sisters. I want this church to be the kind of church that brings God glory. The kind of church that God will use to do great things. For God. Amen? Amen? That's right. I want the Lord to look at us, at this church, and say, Now there is a church that I can use mightily. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I love this church. I want this church to be blessed by the Lord. I want this church to be a Philadelphia kind of church. Amen? Amen. So let us examine for ourselves the carrier characteristics of a church that God uses and let's see if we fill the mold of the Philadelphia church. Amen? If it doesn't, then we need to work on some things. And if it does, praise the Lord. Amen? We move forward. Verse 7 says, These things says He who is holy and He who is true. These things are said by Jesus. Amen? And the things that he says are holy and true. So this verse points out the type of leader, the type of captain, the type of, 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 of person who leads this kind of church. The head of this kind of church, first of all, is holy. That is, he's without blemish. He's absolutely perfect. He's without sin. He walks right. He talks right. I'm not talking about me. <laughs> I'm talking about the Lord Jesus in this church. Amen. We, this church that God leads is a Philadelphia type of church. Amen. He's the head of this kind of church. So for us to be a Philadelphia kind of church, guess what? Jesus has to be the lead. Amen. Amen. And I've said it before and some don't like it. I'm not the shepherd of the flock. I'm a type of shepherd because the Bible says shepherd my flock. But I'm not the shepherd. Amen. I'm a human being. I can't lead like Jesus does. This church is led by Jesus himself. Amen. He started this church. He opened the doors as we're going to continue to read. And we just walked through the door and done what Jesus says. In this church, I consider myself a manager, not the lead. Amen? My job is to make sure that nothing but the Word of God comes from this pulpit, that comes from our Bible studies, that comes from every leader in this church, that the Word of God is preached. His Word, not my Word. He's leading. 
He's in charge. He's in control. Amen? Not me. Amen? I'm just here to make sure that that's what's happening. And Jesus is glorified. Jesus is praised. Jesus is lifted. And I know if we do that, this church will be a Philadelphia church. Amen? That's right. The head of this church is blameless. It's Jesus Christ. He's perfect. He's without sin. Absolutely perfect without sin. The only person that ever lived that was ever perfect. Amen. First Peter 2.22 says, Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. That's Jesus. Amen. If you search me, you'll find some stuff. Amen. Amen. You can't find it in Jesus. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest, which is Jesus, who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was himself in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. That's the God I serve. Amen. Amen. Jesus was tempted, yet without sin. 1 Peter 1.16 says, Be holy, for I am holy. Amen. That's right, the head of this kind of church. Secondly, is honest. Verse 7 says, first of all, he is holy, but he is true. The word true means genuine or that which is real. Jesus is genuine. Jesus is real. Jesus is true. Jesus is worthy of our faith, our trust, and our obedience. Amen? He is the one to follow. Amen? The church that God uses will always be a church that makes much about Jesus. That lifts up Jesus, that worships Jesus, that looks to Jesus, that loves Jesus. Amen? That's right. A church that puts their faith in Jesus, puts their trust in Jesus, obeys Jesus, worships Jesus, praises Jesus, loves Jesus, lifts up the name of Jesus. Amen? That's right. God will use and bless this kind of church. Hallelujah. John 12, 31 says, 32, I mean, I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Amen. That's what draws people to church, not my good luck, because you know I got them. Amen. <laughs> it, it, Jesus is what lifts, grows the church. Amen? Amen? That's right, brothers. Come on, don't lie. We need to lift the name of Jesus. Jesus needs to be exalted. Jesus needs to be magnified. Because Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Jesus is the head of the church. Amen? That's right. Colossians 1.18 says, He is the head of the body, the church, who is in the beginning was the first born from the dead. Amen? Amen. That's right. And 1 Chronicles 29, 11 says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and all that is in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus is the head of He's the master. He's the leader. He's the captain. He's the great shepherd. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I'm just a vessel used for his glory. I'm nothing. Amen? Amen? I'm nothing. But speaking about Jesus. Lifting up Jesus. Jesus is the head. Amen? Amen. That's right, brothers and sisters. Verse 7 says, He who has the keys of David. He who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. Hallelujah. Here's what the head of this kind of church is doing. He's opening and closing doors. Amen. Hallelujah. So he opens the doors that we need to go through. And he closes the doors that we don't need to be going into. Amen. He is busy opening and closing doors. When it says that Jesus has the keys of David. He's referring to a verse back in Isaiah 22, 22. It says, The key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulders, Jesus, 
So he, Jesus, shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. Hallelujah. He who holds the keys, brothers and sisters, is the one who has access and the one who has authority. Authority to open, authority to close, authority to lock, authority to unlock. I got no authority. The only authority I got in Jesus is to speak his word. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. The person who has the keys can let you in or keep you out. The person who has the keys can unlock or lock a door at his discretion, at his word, at his call, at his command. Amen. That's right. He holds the keys, first of all, of salvation. Revelation 1.18 I am he who lives and who was dead and behold I am alive again forevermore and I have the keys of Hades and of death. Amen. Hallelujah. He alone can unlock heaven and he alone can unlock hell for you. Hallelujah. He can lock up heaven and he can lock up hell. Hallelujah. You can't die until the door is unlocked to death for you. And you can't live until the Lord unlocks the door of life. It's all upon Jesus. Amen. He holds the keys of service, second of all. Revelation 3.8. I know your works, and behold, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. That verse was for this church early on in the beginning. Many people wanted to close up this door that God had opened, but it was impossible. There was attacks from every side. There was criticism. Why a fool like me couldn't do it? Why a group of people that came out weren't ready? And this and that. But Lord, open the door, brother. And no one has been able to shut it from the beginning. Amen? And now we're on a good roll, and the Lord is the one that sets the path before us. And as long as we continue to lift up Jesus, magnify the name of Jesus, we ain't going to fail. Amen? Amen? Greater is he that is within us than those that are out in the world. No weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. Amen? Amen. Give God some glory right now. Amen. Jesus alone unlocks doors. It is he who decides what church prospers, what ministries prosper, and to what extent they prosper. When he has opened the door for you, you can expect to be blessed if you walk through it. If God has opened the door for you to serve God, to be in God's house, then the best thing to do if you want to be blessed is start going through that door. Amen? Amen. That's right, brothers and sisters. That's right. When he closes the door, don't complain. Don't cry about it. Just move ahead. Amen? Because he will close some doors. And we think when he closes it, something's wrong. No, he's closing it because he might have a better and bigger door for you to go through. And if you go through that door, you're going to settle. So sometimes he says, nah. Even though you think it's all good, I can see the future. I can see the beginning from the end. And this ain't going to be good to you as good as it looks. Because, you know, Satan comes at us with some good stuff. And he knows the word of God. So it could look like it's a good thing, it's a good blessing. But he wants to get you off the track that God has for you. Amen. Amen. So when the door closes, no amount of crying, no amount of pouting, no amount of begging, no amount of anything that you do, oh Lord, is going to make him open the door that he's already shut. Amen? Amen. And if he shut the door, it's for your benefit. Amen? Amen. That's right. No amount of pleading is going to reopen the door that God has closed. Amen? The Lord is constantly watching over his church. Always. He knows what we do with the opportunities he gives us. He watches over our works and he sees our successes. He sees our failures. Jesus is in the midst of his church constantly. Amen. Amen. He is creating opportunities. He's creating blessings to use us for his glory. To make us useful out in this community. To reach people for Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's right. 
Jesus is in the midst of his church, yet some people don't even recognize him in their midst. Jesus is sitting right here with us sometimes, and we don't even notice that Jesus is working in our life. We're like, where are you, God? Where? He's there. We don't recognize him. The Philadelphia kind of church, brothers and sisters, recognizes Jesus, worships Jesus, honors Jesus. Amen? They recognize the Jesus that's moving amongst them. They can see Jesus in everything. Some people see the devil in everything. Instead of, you know, are you looking for the negative or are you looking for the positive? Some people see the worst situation in any situation. And some people can see the good. That little piece of goodness. Some people say, yeah, all this is going on, but look. Jesus is in my life. Jesus is taking care of me. Jesus is leading me. Jesus opened the door here. Jesus opened the door there. Jesus blessed me here. Jesus blessed me there. And he's going to do it again and again as long as we stay focused on what Jesus is doing. You can't be focused on what the devil's doing. It's easier to focus on what the devil's doing because he's always doing something. It's like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at this. Look at that. And we're paying attention. And... And in reality, when you do that, you're lifting the devil up. You're giving him more time than you're giving Jesus. The Bible says, set your mind on things above, not on the earth. The troubles that come on, those are the things of the earth. We have to set our minds higher on the Lord Jesus. Amen. And forget about what's going on down here. Hallelujah to Jesus. There are times when the Lord will place open doors. And the wise thing to do is just step through those doors because the Lord has determined to bless a church that does His will and walks the way He wants and goes through the doors that He says to go through. Amen? Sometimes God will allow you to place closed doors. What do you do when you run into a closed door? You wait for Him patiently. Until he shows you another door to go through. You wait and say, okay, God closed this door. Don't look at the negative. Just say, well, there must be a reason why this door is closed. So now I'm not going to stare at that door and, 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 and cry about why it didn't open, why it want answers. Just know that it's the Lord keeping an eye on you, keeping you safe, holding you, leading you to where he wants to go. Amen? Amen. And if you do it the way God did it, you will be blessed pretty simple as that. It's hard to do, but, but the instruction is simple. It's hard to do it because we get all emotion, we start looking at it, the trouble gets big in our mind, and then we start to murmur and complain. Brothers and sisters, all of God's doors, the open ones and the closed ones, are a blessing to you. Hallelujah. What we do with them doors that God puts in our, the open ones and closed ones, whatever we do with them will determine your blessing. Whether you're going to be blessed or whether you're not going to be blessed. Verse 8 says, you have a little strength. This means, or probably means, I believe it means, that this church was a small church. With limited resources and only a few workers. What other people though saw out in the world or in our community, what they saw as weakness, small church, ain't nothing going on, it's not big, they're still in school, they ain't got their own building, they ain't got their own property. What the what the community looks at, weakness. God looks at it as strength. We're strong, amen. I believe this church is really gripping on Jesus because we need Jesus more than an established church out there. Amen. They're established. They got money in the bank. Shorty, what they drink? No. They got money in the bank, so they're relaxed. They don't have to hustle. They, if they get their tithe or they get the people to give to build a church, they don't have to. They got the money already there. So they're relaxed. See, that's a, a door that's Probably a dead door, you know. They already walk through it. They're relaxed. They just want to stay there. But see, us, we need God. God's doing a movement here. We can't stay in this group forever. So we're praying. We're, 
praying to Jesus to establish this church here in Tonopah that will rock Tonopah like no other church out here is doing. Amen? Amen. And he's going to bless us and he's going to do it. We're gripping on to Jesus. We need him. So what they see as weakness, God looks at it like strength. He said when you're at your weakest point, you're at your strongest. From outside, we look like the weakest church out in Tonopah. But because of our weakness, we're actually strong because when you're weak, God can work in you. Amen? And God's going to take this church further than any other church out here. We're not in competition, but I know my Lord. And I know if we stay faithful and stay worshiping God, He's going to bless this church in a mighty, mighty way. Amen? Amen. That's right, brothers and sisters. I lost my place. <laughs> If we could, if we could learn to take Jesus at His word and trust Him by faith and just move forward for His glory, regardless of what we think, regardless of what we feel, regardless of what's going on, we're going to experience Lord's blessing in a mightier way. Amen. Romans eight thirty one says, "If God be for us, who can be against us?" Right. If you're seeking God. Serving God and putting your mind on things above, on things of God. Who's going to stop you? Who's going to be able to go against that? That's the victory we have in this church. No matter how many people criticize, we didn't murmur, we didn't complain, we didn't become enemies, we didn't talk bad about them back. We just said, Lord, you're with us and who can be against us? And we're moving along in God's good time. And He brought all you people to bless me with. Hallelujah. Amen. We got the best people in the Hallelujah. <laughs> the last part of verse 8 tells us why the Lord blessed this church and used them like He did. The last part of verse 8 says, You have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. That's right. They had their priorities right. This was a church that was walking in obedience to the word of God. The Bible was their standard of faith. And they refused to deviate from that word. Hallelujah. We're going to stick to God's word around here. Amen. The good parts and the best parts and the better parts. Amen. That's right, my friends. The Lord will bless a church that is faithful to the Word of God, that obedience to the Word of God, and obedience is your proof of your love for the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to see if you love the Lord? Examine yourself. The Bible says, see if you're of the faith. So you check yourself before you wreck yourself. And then you see if you are really walking in the faith. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Lord, Lord laughs, trust me, Lord laughs, Lord laughs. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Because we love him, we hold his word in high regard, we lift up Jesus, we honor him, and in turn he blesses us because of it. That's what brings the blessing. The salvation is free, I've told you before. People want to pile it all up together. If I'm saved, then automatically God's going to bless me no matter what I do. Once saved, always saved. I move on and I, I accepted Christ and I'm blessed everywhere I go. No. Salvation is absolutely free, but the blessing comes through obedience. You can be saved and not be blessed all your life. I know people who are saved and not blessed. The blessing comes through your walk, through your obedience. The blessing will follow you around. The, the blessings of Deuteronomy will fall on you. If you obey his commands, he'll make you the head, not the tail. He'll bless you going in and coming out. He'll bless you in the city. He'll bless you in the country. He'll bless you in and out. He'll bless you. But that comes through the obedience of the Lord. Amen? That's right. Verse 8 also says that they had not denied his name. <coughs> that is, they were a people who were all about the Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I love Jesus, amen? He was the centerpiece of their worship. He was the center of their praise. He was why they gathered together to begin with. Hallelujah. This type of church was not ashamed of Jesus or his death 
or his burial or his resurrection. Amen? Amen. They were not ashamed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were not afraid to tell people, I'm saved. Jesus is my Lord. I serve a living God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. They weren't ashamed of his name. They wanted the world to know all about his glorious blessing. And because they made much of Jesus, Jesus made much of about them. Amen? That's right, brothers and sisters. This kind of church is the kind of church we ought to strive to be. Amen? This church ain't me. This church is you. All of us together. Amen? This church wasn't without its challenges, though. While there were some that were with it and glorified the standard they lived, there were some that didn't. Verse 9 says, Indeed, I will make those from the synagogue of Satan who claim to be in the word and they're not. Amen? So not everyone was happy with this church. There were some strong enemies who claimed to be of God, but really they were of Satan. Amen? They were from the synagogue of Satan. The Bible says that in place, there's a place where it says where there's wheat and the tares. That God plants the wheat and then at night when nobody was looking, some people came in and sowed tares. And that's the enemy. People come to church, they're not all of God. Some are wheat. I mean, some are wheat and some are tares. And it says that they grow up together and they look alike. You can't tell the difference when they're early on in their growth because they grow the same, they look the same, but when it comes time to give fruit, that's where you can tell the difference. The tares have a bunch of seeds in their heads, black seeds, and then the wheat have wheat in their heads. That's, you know, the fruit will determine, but you can't tell until that harvest is ready to be done. Amen? So the true church will always be a target of those who don't know the Lord. Devil goes to church more faithful than we do. Amen. He wants to know what's going on. He pops in the church. He sends a couple of demons to go check it out. See what they're doing down there. And as long as they're not saving people, they're relaxed. But as soon as the church gets on fire for God, you bet you that they'll start making some problems. Murmuring in the background, talking about this, talking about that, putting scenes of discord in people's minds. You see how they look? Did you see what they said? They move, and then we start to not be in one accord anymore. And there's, Satan does that to a church that's really serving God. So when folks who are not walking with Jesus start to criticize the church, we ought to praise the Lord because that means that God is with us. If we didn't have any challenges, the devil doesn't mess with his own. They're already here, so why is he going to give them trouble? Actually, he gives them a little play whistle they can stay there. Amen? The Philadelphia kind of church will remain faithful in spite of all the people that come against it. In spite of the synagogue of Satan, they keep serving, they keep living, they keep trusting, they keep obeying, they keep worshiping. They keep on keeping on, amen, for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Verse 10 and 11 says, Because you have kept my commands to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one takes your crown. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. This church received the glorious promise that they will one day be in heaven with God. That Jesus is going to come back for them. And I personally believe he's talking about escaping the hour of tribulation. Amen. There's going to come something awful upon this earth. God's going to judge the physical earth. God, physically, he's going to judge bodies. He's going to judge the earth. And that's the part that we get to escape. Amen. Jesus is going to come down and he's going to get us out. And we are promised that if we're a Philadelphia kind of church. Amen. He's going to get us out of here. He's going to remove us from the hour of test that's going to come upon the whole earth. Amen. Amen. That's right. 
1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm comforting you with these words. You have the promise of God that you will be removed from that hour of great tribulation that's coming upon this earth. Amen? That's right, brothers. He says, I want out of here. Amen? I don't want to go through it. He says the people that died in Christ, the grave will open up, and I think they're going to go first because they're six feet lower than us. So they get up first, and then us that are alive, that still worship God and believe God, will meet them again in the air to meet God. Amen. Pulling us out of this place. Amen. Amen. That's a glorious day. Amen. Amen. That's right, brothers and sisters. That's right. We need to keep on keeping on for Jesus. Knowing that he's going to return to take us up out of this world. Jesus is coming back for his church. And our duty to him is to live every day like he might come back right now. And work every day like we got all the time in the world. We need to be busy about God's business. And at the same time be ready to take off faster than Superman. Amen. Superman can't even fly as fast as the twinkling of an eye. Amen. He's only got bullet speed. Twinkling of an eye is a lot faster. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Our duty is to just obey God. And we are standing here before God, waiting for Him. Whether we go through the grave or we go through the clouds, we need to be ready and persevere and endure for Jesus. The Bible talks a lot about persevering and enduring. So when trouble comes, are you persevering and enduring? Or are you collapsing and crying? And falling by the way. Amen? Those who genuinely belong to God, the Bible says, they will persevere. They're the ones that endure. They're the ones the Bible calls the overcomers. Amen? And those who fall away, will fall away to the west side. Not the west side, but the wayside. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 11, first part, again says, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one takes your crown. The Lord is cautioning us regarding our future reward. That we are to keep our guard up so that no one takes our rewards from us. He's not talking about salvation. He's talking about the rewards. We can lose our rewards. We can't lose our salvation, but we definitely can lose our rewards. Amen? 1 Corinthians 3.31 says, Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the fire. At the end of time, God's going to test your works that you've done for the Lord. And all the works that were done in good intent, done really for the Lord, are going to remain. And the works that we did selfishly, or did for our own pride, or did for our own glory, or did for our own self, are going to burn away. And then, when he does that, he's going to look at all your works and poof, put fire to it out of the fire of his eyes. And whatever's left on the ground, that's what's going to be what he's going to reward you for. So if you've done a bunch of work selfishly, it's going to burn away, you're going to have nothing. But if your rewards, if your work is good and honest, 
glorifying God, lifting up God, it's going to remain. He talks about faulty materials. If you build your build upon this foundation, the foundation of Jesus with wood, hay, and stubble, or you can build your on that foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, that's what's going to happen. The stones of good precious stones are good intentions, righteous living, doing things for the Lord that are right for His glory. The wood, hay, and stubble are the selfish stuff we do for self. So that's when He's going to put the fire to it. And wood, hay, and stubble burns up quickly. But gold and silver and precious stones, when it's put under fire, what happens? It comes back more pure. Hallelujah. And then that's going to be the base of your reward. So he says, don't let no one come and steal your crown, your reward. That's the crown you're going to get. And when you get these rewards, you'll have these crowns. And these crowns ain't for you to... Like a trophy. Look what I got, man. Look at my trophy. I got a bigger one than you. I got a trophy. Hey, I'm the champion. Hey, I'm the winning Christian. No. These rewards are so you can take them off and throw them at the feet of Jesus and giving them more glory and giving them more honor. But if you stand there and your stuff gets burned up, you're going to stand there in front of God with nothing to give. Nothing to praise God for. You can't lose your salvation, brothers and sisters, but you can lose your reward and you can end up standing in front of God with smoke coming off your back. Amen. That verse said that, but he himself will be saved, but only as one, escaping through the fire. That means you're going to be standing in front of God with nothing, barely escaping hell, and smoke will be coming off your back while you're standing in front of God. Shame. Yeah, you'll be saved, but you're going to suffer much loss. You could have, you're going to suffer the loss of some of those rewards that you could have had. Some other people are going to be handing rewards and you're going to be looking at it and be saying, man, if I would have just been a little more faithful, I could have got that. If I would have been a little more faithful to God, I could have got that. If I would have honored Him in my life, I could have got that one. And they're going to be passing them out. And they're going to be just going by you. And you're not going to have nothing to give to the Lord. Man, I don't want to be in that spot, amen? And I know neither do you. So right now we got time to honor God and praise God. He's not, not asking for nothing but your praise and your glory and you lifting up his name and loving him like he loved you. That's all he's asking for. Yeah. He owns it all. He don't need nothing from us. But when we give and we serve, we show him how much we love him. Amen? Yeah. That's right, brothers and sisters. Not quit there, boy. So don't let the devil or the world cause you to get your eyes off the prize that's to be won at the end of this race. The Bible says, run with endurance, run. The Bible, Paul says, when I swing, I'm not swinging like I'm swinging at the air or shadow boxing. He says, I'm swinging to hit something, amen? Yeah, so when we're doing the Lord's thing, we're not just shadow boxing, swinging in midair. No, when you're serving God, you're trying to hit something. Me, I put the devil's face right in front of me. Mm. When I come with the Lord, I want to knock him out, amen? Yeah. I want to blacken his eye. He ain't getting nothing, amen? Yeah. That's right. Hebrews 12, 1 says, therefore, be we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We gotta run like we wanna win. No more fast walking. It makes it look like they're running, but they're too. Like my boy, he runs. Looks like he's trying real hard, but he's barely moving, you know. <laughs> he's doing the motion. He's got his head back. But I mean, he's barely even gaining his ground. Amen? A lot of people like that, too. They don't like sports. 
But you know what I'm saying? We have to run like we mean it. We have to serve God like we love Him. We have to lift Him up like we really believe that He is the Almighty. Hallelujah. If you want to be blessed, I'm trying to get you blessed. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm not trying to lay the law on you. I'm not trying to put a yoke on you. I'm, not, I'm trying to get you blessed. That's all I want. Because we are together in this. And God blesses us as a unit. God is all about the church. Amen. That's right. And they were promised that they will go out no more. Jesus reminds them that they are headed to a place of safety in heaven. Hallelujah. This world may be changing and there may be dangerous things on every side. People coming at us. But those who have the door of heaven open to them will find a place of safety and security and rest. Every time trouble comes my way, I rest in Jesus. I'm like, this is coming now, but greater is he that is within me. No weapon formed against me. Lord, you got me going in, got me out, and I just have to rest in his own, and then it's all good. Yeah. Amen. I grab that promise that Jesus gave me, and I ain't letting go. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Verse 12 says, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven from God, and I will write my name on him. These people received the most awesome promise that anybody could receive. They were going to be identified as God's people. They will have the name of God upon them. They will be citizens of heaven, and they even have the promise that the Lord's going to write his name on them. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's right. What he's talking about here is security in the Lord. Those who trust the Lord are claimed by the Lord. And they are guaranteed citizenship in heaven. Philippians 3.20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven from which we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our citizenship is in heaven, and right now we're looking to the coming of the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's right. All these promises are for a, 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 a Philadelphia kind of church. Amen. He's promising this to the Philadelphia kind of church, brothers and sisters. This building is not the church. Saddle Mountain Christian Fellowship is not the church. You are the church of God. The Bible says you are the temple of the Almighty God. Church is you. God ain't coming for a building. He ain't coming for Saddle Mountain Christian Fellowship. He's coming for His church, which is you. God calls this church the Bride of Christ. Hallelujah. One day, the Lord Jesus is going to come for his bride. Jesus is, to, is all about the bride. That's why you need to become part of this church. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is coming for the church. Amen. Hallelujah. And people say, I don't need church to serve. I don't want to go. Then you're not part of the church. When God comes, he's going to come for his bride. He's going to come for his church. That's why it's important for you to be part of the church. Amen. I'm not saying be part of this one, but be part of somewhere where they serve God and praise God. I want it to be here, of course. You know what I mean? The more people we got here, the louder we get for Jesus, the more glory he receives, and the more blessings come back down. That's all about. So we need more people with more voice, people who are worshiping God. Don't just sit there. Yeah. We need people who say glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Yes. That's right, yeah. brothers and sisters. The Philadelphia kind of church, they put their trust in Jesus. They put their faith in Jesus. They obey Jesus. They worship Jesus. They praise Jesus. They magnify Jesus. They glorify Jesus. They exalted Jesus. They lifted the name of Jesus. They love Jesus. Amen. And as a result, God blessed them. 
It says he crowned them. He made them pillars. He wrote his name on them. The name of God. The name of, of, of God's city. That he opened doors for them that no one could shut. I believe that I'm looking at right now a Philadelphia church. A young Philadelphia church is emerging right here. I can see it. But let us continue to be that church. Let us continue to worship God like we started. The Bible says to the other church that weren't doing good, He says, remember your first love and go back to that. So that's where we need to stay. If we keep the first love with Jesus is our first love. Not the first girl you met. Not the first guy who made your eyes go winky wink. That's the, when you met Jesus, that was your true first love. You didn't know love until you met Jesus. Amen. All that fuzzy feeling and oh, the goosebumps, that ain't love, brother. Jesus is love. Amen. That's right. That's right. So I'm asking you, would you join me this morning and asking the Lord to use us mightily? Ask Him to clean us out and fill us up, to open doors that no one can, can close. Would you join me in praying for this church this morning? Amen. I want the Lord to use us greatly. And He will if we trust and obey Him. We need to work our walk as individuals and as a church. So join me in seeking God for the future of this church. Be part of this church. Help us build this church for the glory of God. Help us put a beacon of light out on one of these streets that just bring people to Christ and lift up Jesus. And I believe that if we do that, God's going to bless us in a mighty way. He's going to bless the church. And how He blesses the church is people start getting healed. People's bank accounts start getting better. Joy and happiness starts to fill your life. It starts to rub off on the neighbors. It starts to rub off on your children. And you're just, the Bible says, you're going to be overflowing with blessings. And I don't mean money. <laughs> you can have a lot of money and not be blessed. The blessing is inside. The peace that surpasses all understanding. The joy in your heart. Knowing that my God loves me and he ain't going to ever let anything happen to me. No matter what it looks like. That's the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Let's stand and give God glory.